The Boeing X-20 Dinosaur Dynamic Soarer was a United States Air Force USAF program to develop a spaceplane that could be used for a variety of military missions, including aerial reconnaissance, bombing, space rescue, satellite maintenance, and as a space interceptor to sabotage enemy satellites. The program ran from October 24, 1957 to December 10, 1963, cost $660 million US$5.4 billion today, and was cancelled just after spacecraft construction had begun. Other spacecraft under development at the time, such as Mercury or Vostok, were based on space capsules that returned on ballistic re-entry profiles. Dinosaur was more like the much later space shuttle. It could not only travel to distant targets at the speed of an intercontinental ballistic missile, it was designed to glide to Earth like an aircraft under control of a pilot. It could land at an airfield, rather than simply falling to Earth and landing with a parachute. Dinosaur could also reach Earth orbit, like Mercury or Gemini. These characteristics made Dinosaur a far more advanced concept than other human spaceflight missions of the period. Research into a spaceplane was realized much later, in other reusable spacecraft such as the Space Shuttle, which had its first orbital flight in 1981, and, more recently, the Boeing X-40 and X-37B spacecraft. <laughs> Background Following World War II, many German scientists were taken to the United States by the Office of Strategic Services' Operation Paperclip. Among them was Dr. Walter Dornberger, the former head of Germany's wartime rocket program, who had detailed knowledge of Eugen Sanger's Silbervogel project. Working for Bell, he attempted to create interest in a boost glide system in the USAF, and elsewhere. This resulted in the USAF requesting a number of feasibility and design studies, carried out by Bell, Boeing, Convair, Douglas, Martin, North American, Republic, and Lockheed, for boost glide vehicles during the early 1950s. BOMI bomber missile Highwards hypersonic weapons research and development supporting system the brass bell reconnaissance vehicle and rocket bomber robo the development of dinosaur can be traced back to the silbervogel bomber project of world war 2 the concept was a rocket-powered bomber that could travel vast distances by gliding to its target after being boosted to high speed greater than 5.5 kilometers per second and high altitude 50 to 150 kilometers by A4 or A9 rockets. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Lifting reentry method. Essentially, these rockets would place the vehicle onto an exoatmospheric intercontinental ballistic missile-like trajectory and then fall away. When the vehicle re-entered the atmosphere, instead of fully re-entering, bleeding off its speed and landing, the vehicle would use the lift from its wings to redirect its glide angle upward while bleeding off speed in the process. In this way, the vehicle would be bounced back into space again. This skip glide method would repeat until the speed was low enough that the pilot of the vehicle would need to pick a landing spot and glide the vehicle to a landing. 
This use of hypersonic atmospheric lift meant that the vehicle could greatly extend its range over a ballistic trajectory using the same engines. Such boost glide systems could potentially strike at targets anywhere in the world, so-called antipodal bombers. At hypersonic speeds, be very difficult to intercept, and the aircraft itself could be small and lightly armed, compared to a typical heavy bomber. In addition, a boost glide aircraft may be recoverable, acting as a manned bomber, or as an unmanned non-recoverable missile. Topic. development. On October 10, 1957 ARDC USAF Air Research and Development Command headquarters consolidated Hywards, Brass Bell, and Robo Studies into a three-step abbreviated development plan for System 464L, Dinosaur alternative date October 24, 1957. The proposal drew together the existing boost glide proposals, as the USAF believed a single vehicle could be designed to carry out all the bombing and reconnaissance tasks intended for the separate studies, and act as successor to the X-15 research program. The Dinosaur program was to be conducted in three stages, a research vehicle Dinosaur I, a reconnaissance vehicle Dinosaur II, previously Brass Bell, and a vehicle that added strategic bombing capability Dinosaur III, previously Robo. The first glide tests for Dinosaur I were expected to be carried out in 1963, followed by powered flights, reaching Mach 18, the following year. A robotic glide missile was to be deployed in 1968, with the fully operational weapons system Dinosaur III expected by 1974. In March 1958, nine U.S. aerospace companies tendered for the Dinosaur contract. Of these, the field narrowed to proposals from Bell and Boeing. Even though Bell had the advantage of six years' worth of design studies, the contract for the spaceplane was awarded to Boeing in June 1959 by which time their original design had changed markedly and now closely resembled what Bell had submitted. In late 1961, the Titan III was chosen as the launch vehicle. The Dinosaur was to be launched from Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, Florida. Topic. Design The overall design of the X-20 Dinosaur was outlined in March 1960. It had a low wing delta shape, with winglets for control rather than a more conventional tail. The framework of the craft was to be made from the Rene 41 super alloy, as were the upper surface panels. The bottom surface was to be made from molybdenum sheets placed over insulated Rene 41, while the nose cone was to be made from graphite with zirconia rods. Due to the changing requirements, various forms of the dinosaur were designed. All variants shared the same basic shape and layout. A single pilot sat at the front, with an equipment bay situated behind. This bay contained data collection equipment, weapons, reconnaissance equipment, or in the X-20X shuttle space vehicle, a four-man mid-deck. A transtage, located behind the equipment bay, would maneuver the craft in orbit or fire during launch as part of an abort sequence. This transtage would be jettisoned before descent into the atmosphere. While falling through the atmosphere an opaque heat shield made from a refractory metal would protect the window at the front of the craft. 
This heat shield would then be jettisoned after aerobraking so the pilot could see, and safely land, a drawing in space. Aeronautics magazine from before the project's cancellation depicts the craft dipping down into the atmosphere, skimming the surface, to change its orbital inclination. It would then fire its rocket to resume orbit. This would be a unique ability for a spacecraft, for the laws of celestial mechanics mean it requires an enormous expenditure of energy for a rocket to change its orbital inclination once it has reached orbit. Hence the dinosaur could have had a military capacity of being launched into one orbit and rendezvousing with a satellite, even if the target were to expend all its propellant in changing its orbit. Acceleration forces on the pilot would be severe in such a maneuver. Unlike the later space shuttle, Dinosaur did not have wheels on its tricycle undercarriage as the rubber tires required cooled compartments or they would burn during re-entry. Instead Goodyear developed retractable wire brush skids made of the same Rene 41 alloy as the airframe. Topic. Operational history In April 1960, seven astronauts were secretly chosen for the Dinosaur Program. Neil Armstrong, 1930-2012, NASA, 1960-1962 William H. Bill Dana, 1930 to 2014, NASA, 1960 to 1962. Henry C. Gordon, 1925 to 1996, Air Force, 1960 to 1963. Pete Knight, 1929 to 2004, Air Force, 1960 to 1963. Russell L. Rogers, 1928 to 1967, Air Force, 1960 to 1963. Milt Thompson, 1926 to 1993, NASA, 1960 to 1963. James W. Wood, 1924 to 1990, Air Force, 1960 to 1963. Neil Armstrong and Bill Dana left the program in mid 1962. On September 19, 1962, Albert Cruz was added to the Dinosaur Program, and the names of the six remaining dinosaur astronauts were announced to the public. By the end of 1962, Dinosaur had been designated X-20, the booster to be used in the Dinosaur I drop tests successfully fired, and the USAF had held an unveiling ceremony for the X-20 in Las Vegas. Minnesota Honeywell Corporation completed flight tests on an inertia guidance sub-system for the X-20 project at Eglin Air Force Base, Florida, utilizing an NF-101B Voodoo by August 1963, Boeing B-52C-40B O Stratofortress, 530399, was a Assigned to the program for air dropping the X-20, similar to the X-15 launch profile. When the X-20 was cancelled, it was used for other air drop tests including that of the B-1A escape capsule. Topic. Problems Besides the funding issues that often accompany research efforts, the Dinosaur Program suffered from two major problems, uncertainty over the booster to be used to send the craft into orbit, and a lack of a clear goal for the project. Many different boosters were proposed to launch Dinosaur into orbit. 
The original USAF proposal suggested LOX, JP4, fluorine ammonia, fluorine hydrazine, or RMI X15 engines. Boeing, the principal contractor, favored an Atlas Centaur combination. Eventually, November 1959, the Air Force stipulated a Titan, as suggested by failed competitor Martin, but the Titan I was not powerful enough to launch the 5-ton X-20 into orbit. The Titan II and Titan III boosters could launch Dinosaur into Earth orbit, as could the Saturn C-1 later renamed the Saturn I, and all were proposed with various upper stage and booster combinations. While the new Titan IIIC was eventually chosen December 1961 to send Dinosaur into space, the vacillations over the launch system delayed the project as it complicated planning. The original intention for Dinosaur, outlined in the Weapons System 464L proposal, called for a project combining aeronautical research with weapons system development. Many questioned whether the USAF should have a manned space program, when that was the primary domain of NASA. It was frequently emphasized by the U.S. Air Force that, unlike the NASA programs, Dinosaur allowed for controlled re-entry, and this was where the main effort in the X-20 program was placed. On January 19, 1963, the Secretary of Defense, Robert McNamara, directed the U.S. Air Force to undertake a study to determine whether Gemini or Dinosaur was the more feasible approach to a space-based weapon system. In the middle of March 1963, after receiving the study, Secretary McNamara stated that the Air Force had been placing too much emphasis on controlled re-entry when it did not have any real objectives for orbital flight. This was seen as a reversal of the Secretary's earlier position on the Dinosaur program. Dinosaur was also an expensive program that would not launch a manned mission until the mid-1960s at the earliest. This high cost and questionable utility made it difficult for the U.S. Air Force to justify the program. Eventually, the X-20 Dinosaur program was cancelled on December 10, 1963, on the day that X-20 was cancelled, the U.S. Air Force announced another program, the Manned Orbiting Laboratory, a spin-off of Gemini. This program was also eventually cancelled. Another black program, Isenglass, which was to be air-launched from a B-52 bomber, was evaluated and some engine work done, but it too was eventually cancelled. <laughs> Legacy Despite cancellation of the X-20, the affiliated research on spaceplanes influenced the much larger space shuttle. The final design also used delta wings for controlled landings. The later, and much smaller Soviet Bor 4 was closer in design philosophy to the Dinosaur, while NASA's Martin X-23 Prime and Martin Marietta X-24A, HL-10 research aircraft also explored aspects of sub-orbital and space flight. The ESA proposed Hermes manned spacecraft took the design and expanded its scale. Topic. Specifications, as designed General characteristics Crew, 1 pilot Length, 35 feet 4 in 10.77 meters Wingspan, 20 feet 10 in 6.34 meters 
height 8 feet 6 in 2.59 meters wing area 345 feet squared 32 square meters empty weight 10395 pounds 4715 kilograms max Takeoff weight, 11,387 pounds, 5,165 kilograms. Power plant, 1 times Transtage rocket engine, 72,000 lbf, 323 kilonewtons performance. Maximum speed, 17,500 miles per hour, 28,165 kilometers per hour. Range, Earth orbit 22,000 nautical miles, 40,700 kilometers. Service ceiling, 530,000 feet, 160 kilometers. Rate of climb, 100,000 feet per minute, 510 meters per second. Wing loading, 33 pounds per foot squared, 161 kilograms per square meter. Topic: Media. The 1959 Twilight Zone Season 1 episode titled, And When the Sky Was Opened, made reference to a spacecraft called the X-20 which had a similar profile but could carry a crew of three. In 1962, the fifth book in Donald A. Walheim's Mike Mars series, Mike Mars Flies the Dinosaur, had the title character fly an emergency rescue mission in the dinosaur. John Berryman's 1963 short story, The Trouble with Telstar featured a dinosaur being used to intercept communications satellites for repair. The 1969 Hollywood film drama Maroon featured a rescue craft modeled somewhat after the dinosaur called the XRV for experimental rescue vehicle being hurriedly deployed to rescue astronauts aboard a crippled Apollo command capsule. This was lampooned in Mad Magazine as the XRT, the experimental rescue thing. Topic. See also Boeing X-37 Saturn Shuttle Hermes Hypersoarelated development Manned orbital laboratory aircraft of comparable role, configuration and era ASSET, a subscale re-entry test vehicle designed to verify the superalloy heat shield of the dinosaur. BOR-4 BOR-5 mikoyan gurevich MiG-105 North American X-15 Silbervogel